Tuesday, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office announced the death of an inmate at the Duval County Jail. This marks the 12th death this year and the first since the new private health care contractor, NAPCARE, took over. Uh, Nate, what are you hearing about this story? <laughs> well, I mean, in some ways, this particular story kind of touches on a couple of different issues. The man who died was homeless and was also uh, there because of a misdemeanor trespassing charge. Um, those are kind of wrap in a couple of different issues. The sheriff was actually on this show that very day. The death was announced kind of downplaying the idea that JSO locks up people for misdemeanors for significant amounts of time. Um, and, and, you know, in, the, in that kind of same breath also defended his, his kind of obstinance about um, uh, an adult civil citation program, mm -hmm. about implementing one here, uh, just a way of diverting some people from going to jail for nonviolent offenses. Uh, and so, like, it was kind of a the, – the, the timing of it was, was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we would, we would, we would, we would absolutely, something. we would absolutely love for the sheriff to come back and talk to me about all of these issues. And actually, that death occurred on I, Monday. They did not release the news until Tuesday, and so the sheriff sitting here with me uh, did know about it. Um, his comment, though, was specifically that most of these misdemeanor cases, uh, uh, they're out of jail the next morning. Well, not according to this poor yeah, gentleman who was guy, in there for two weeks. Yeah, this guy was there for thirteen days. Yeah, yeah, which, thirteen days. Which blows me away. I mean, you're, you're, he's awaiting trial on a misdemeanor trespass charge. I mean, we got people being released crossing the border seeking amnesty. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but they're they're being released. We got a guy that we're paying the cost of, of housing. Of, of why are we holding this guy for for uh, for two weeks for a trial? Give him a citation. Give him a, a notice to appear. And, but uh, you know, the, the 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 fact that it's under NAFCARE. Is you know I don't know if that's it's just a, just a raw issue right now with healthcare at the, at, the, at the jail and again this is another uh, a tragic death at the jail you know, 12th this year but uh, I, I what happened I mean I, that's what I want to see the video right what happened the guy is seen moving around his cell at 10 o'clock come back two hours later and he's under the bunk and he's unresponsive what happened that two hour period. I yeah. mean, was there any diagnosis of any health issue? Was he under meds? I mean, we is, have not received we, any more information on this case at this point. Yeah. Again, let's not forget the sheriff did indicate that they're aware of NAFCARE's shortcomings. So in this case, this new contract comes with some eyes open. Mm -hmm. So uh, but sheriff, I, I like to say mm -hmm. in a year, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. The sheriff said that adults who make adult decisions get adult prizes when questioned about adult citations. I would just once again like to uh, say that I would love to have a conversation with the sheriff, but he uh, won't speak to me. So um, the chair is open oh, you, anytime. Al, what do you mean? He's, no, he, 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 he touts how transparent he is. I, I, can't, he, I, I can't believe that. Why wouldn't he come on the show? And yeah, talk to it's you? Uh, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask him, but uh, mm. uh I would love to have a conversation with him. And Dan did a great job talking to him. Uh, but I, I also, I have some questions that I would like to ask. We've got a caller on the line, Todd, on the south side. Todd, how are you today? And thank you for talking to me. <laughs> Good morning to everyone on the panel. Um, yes, I wanted to make a comment, and um, it would take some time to explain to everybody why he won't talk to you, but I think I have a good idea. Uh, T.K. Waters, the sheriff, was on, and he said that we really don't have any racial issues uh, in Jacksonville, I don't know if I'm quoting him correctly, but um, my question is, that's pretty um, a dangerous thing to say. Um, if he doesn't have a police unit dealing with the white supremacist groups in this area, um, we've got a real serious problem. He's got a gang unit, drug unit. Where is the unit to deal with a uh, question of white supremacy and the different organizations that exist in Jacksonville. Todd, thanks so much for your question. I would, I would just say that like, uh, with the reporting that I have done on issues of white supremacy, I'm actually working on a story right now with, uh, the other show I host reveal, uh, and the idea of law enforcement, not taking white supremacy serious is not just, uh, confined to uh to this city it's uh it's a national thing um 
uh, one of the stories that I'm working on right now uh, is about the protests that happened in uh, Denver after George Floyd's death. And the FBI had planted a uh, an informant uh, in the racial justice movements, um, which were, you know, by and large peaceful until this informant riled it up. Um, but they had no idea what was going on in groups like the Proud Boys uh, around that time as well. Um, and then soon after, you know, January 6th happened. So I think that, you know, what, what, what Todd has identified is, is not a local thing. It's a national thing where we tend to um, not put as much attention as needed on these white supremacist movements. And I think January 6th is uh, a, a, a clear uh, reminder of that uh, because that is a monumental failure of intelligence um, on the part of the FBI and, uh, and and other national agencies. We're going to go to Tom in the West Side. Tom, how are you? I'm wonderful. How about yourselves today? I'm just so glad that you called in to talk to me. Oh, excellent. I just wanted to say that uh, what I get from the article I read on uh, Mr. Givens and his arrest is it seems like the jail was the wrong place for him to be anyway. Um, what I took away from the article was that this was a man dealing with severe mental health issues and probably should have been in the hospital, which Cam's does have a mental health unit and uh, or MHRC. And, and the last place he should have been in was the jail. So he definitely should not have died in jail. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for calling. I'll give it to our panel. Dan? Well, according to the tributary and other media sources, he was in a hospital complaining of hip pain and refused treatment and then apparently hung around for whatever reason we don't know. And that's where the trespassing charge came from. So, again, not to indicate what his state of mind was at the time, but he was in a hospital. And if he'd stayed there, possibly there would have been some mental health resources applied at said hospital. Yeah, agreed. I mean, that, that that's what the story said. He was seeking medical care and he was trespassed out and arrested. I mean, so what medical care did he receive over the 12 days or 14 days, however long he was at uh, Duval County Stockade? I don't know. It's a, but, but it's a great question. Ongoing investigation. Ongoing if investigation. Ask, I'm sure. Absolutely. I think one thing that the, the caller brings up um, that I, I, I think we talked about this last Friday, if I'm correct, but uh, in this society, we expect the police department to do everything, right? Or the, the sheriff's office to do everything. They're, they're supposed to be mental health counselors. They're supposed to break up domestic violence. They're supposed to blah, 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 all of these things. And it just feels like if we as a city, like really put some thought into uh, how you could shift um, change the paradigm from what we are doing currently where the police are supposed to handle everything to thinking about like if this man has mental health issues then maybe you don't call the police out for it maybe he doesn't go to jail maybe he goes to somewhere that's dedicated to helping people like him I think too many times um, we tend to think about punishing people instead of thinking about how can we help people it, it Al, you know, amen. I mean, I, and that's been a, that's been a chronic problem. It's been an ongoing problem here in the city of Jacksonville and, and nationwide as well. I mean, it, it, let's face it. But uh, I remember when uh, when Congressman Rutherford was sheriff. I mean, we used to get in annual battles about his budget, and and he said, Jack, listen, here's the deal. My agency is the largest provider of mental health care services in the county, in the county, and so. Whatever. Yeah. And we're going to go to the phone. We've got Azim. Azim, how are you this morning? Hi, good morning. Um, uh, I'm actually one of the, I'm an internal medicine resident at UF Health, in the third year in my training. I just wanted to make a brief comment because I, I, we see these uh, jail patients come to UF uh, quite often. And I only them when them do come to the ER, and I'm sure many of them do go back. But I think. In my three years at UF, there's always a question about whether or not when we when we treat a patient and we send them back to the jail, what what access do they have to medications and antibiotics? And it's not uh, it's not infrequent that sometimes they do come back because of some lapse in their treatment. So I, I can't really comment on what happened to this gentleman who unfortunately passed away. But one thing that comes to my mind is if. He either wasn't given a medication that he was due to be scheduled to be given or there was a lapse in some kind of care. Um, it's unfortunate that it happened, though. 
Azim, thank you so much for calling in. You talk about mental health, though. There are three officers who are paired with uh, mental health uh, officials as part of a new program. I think they have another one coming online. And they are assigned to cases where they possibly will divert them to a mental health program. But, that, again, that's three officers with three mental health say. out of 900, yeah. 1,000 officers. Uh, it's a start. It's a great idea. We were only the second sheriff's office in the in the state to do that, so I applaud them for that. But um, perchance you need dedicated teams in each zone, um, yeah. focusing on, on, on certain things, and maybe you need a team at uh, Shands, which you have Shands, which is, of course, our trauma unit where most of the indigent care goes. Yeah, Interesting. I think we're talking to here. We're co- it's a confluence between mental health and physical health. We don't really know. As a caller just said, it could have been failure to, to provide meds. What meds was he on? I mean, we don't know. He was seeking medical care at the hospital. He was trespassed out and arrested. So it's uh, I, more I, information. I, I mean, the, the, a bigger problem here is that the sheriff's office has not been transparent about these deaths mm-hmm. beyond acknowledging that they've happened, which is a very low standard. Um, We just don't know a lot about any of these cases, and that's unacceptable. All we know is that there have been a lot. 12 is a lot for a county of this size and for that jail population. Um, Something is deeply wrong, and the, the city and the city council seem intent on having a discussion about building a new jail that's kind of taking place in a vacuum. Like, they don't want to touch these larger issues. It's like, we just want to talk about getting a new jail. And I think that's a mistake, because (laughs) jail deaths are not happening because there's not fresh paint on the wall. They're happening because of management and because of the administration and running of the jail. And if if you don't address that, if you don't address as you guys were talking about our mental health issues and to some degree, even our homelessness problem, like none of all of this is going to be for naught and we'll end up spending a ton of money building a new jail and just having the same old problems. Yes. I think that, you know, one thing that I'm always reminded of when I hear about these jail deaths and, uh, and a, a lot of times I think when you're talking about them, there's, there's a general apathy because, you know, these are people who have died, locked up and the thing that i'm always thinking about is but did their crime necessitate a death sentence um and that that's what we should be asking and of course the answer is no um that you know these people are jacksonville residents they're uh jacksonvillians that's right jacksonvillians not jacksons uh they're jacksonvillians and they should they should be treated with respect and care